Survivor specialists Phil and Will are back with our Survivor 46 episode 5 recap. Finally got something different than Yanu falling apart. But Will, I have to present a question to you right off the bat. Is there a more unlikable player in the history of Survivor than Hunter right now? Is there anybody more unlikable? Because, not because he didn't get the logos in order, but because he went through all these seasons naming the winners, and he gets to co-wrong, and he calls it the one where Caleb passed out. Doesn't even mention the queen's name. What the hell is this? What am I watching? Well, I'm pissed. Hunter, bottom of my power rankings this week, no matter what. He's a monster. You just kind of tipped me off that you're like, hey, you, you know what I'm going to start with, right? I'm going to come in really hot here. Be ready for it. Um, I was, I thought you were just going to be really excited that Ben was here. Uh, and that I he survived so this that. episode because there were obviously a lot of kind of arrows pointing Ben's way. And I, even after the votes had been cast, I was like, this looks like Ben is going home. I think I'd rather see Ben stay, but it's the smarter thing to do to get rid of Ben, especially after he dropped the aqua dump line. That's kind of a death sentence on Survivor. If you bring up the aqua dump, I think... Uh, that's usually not a good sign. We had Darnell bring that up also mm -hmm. in that season that Caleb was medevaced from. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. He was the first boot once he mentioned Aqua Dump, and I think we've seen that a couple times. So I was fearing for Ben's life. So for you to come in here and that's your qualm with this episode, and that's that's your issue that he didn't name Michelle's season or name. No, no, no. Her. He didn't name Michelle. He named her he season name as the one that Caleb passed out. Yeah, he didn't name Michelle. Uh, at all, which, hey, you don't know. This is an edited, truncated no. version of what we saw. Um, okay, that's where you want to start. That's not what I was expecting whatsoever. Well, I'm just going to say, like, the Ben situation was pretty wild. I did fear for him. Maria used her extra vote tonight, which we're going to have to get to the bottom of. We right. had Yanu. That's a big one. I was shocked that's a big when one. the fifth vote wasn't like, Jen, you're gone. What, you're what gone. was the point of that? And she didn't even like split them either. So, no. So, we'll so talk about that. Yeah, we'll we got to figure that Yanu. out. Yanu finally wins. We'll talk about this, this, you know, the actual challenge here, the actual put the survivor seasons in order. But I might just spend the next 48 minutes, 49 minutes talking about the fact that not only that, if it was edited, Will. They decided that it was better to show, couldn't even tell it was Caleb on the stretcher. They decided it would be better to show that than Michelle's beautiful face on our screens because they would have to admit that she won Co Wrong. Like we just didn't have time for that. So I'm surprised I don't know, they used Co Wrong's logo. It's actually, I, I've been looking at a lot of Survivor logos recently. Um, we got to plug our new connection series we're doing. We do. Maybe I'll, I've, I've been looking at. Yeah, the, the, the video is on YouTube. If you haven't seen, we had a video posted earlier today um, where we play Survivor Connections. If you don't know Connections, it's like the, the brother or sister to Wordle in the New York Times gaming app or gaming universe. And we we've been making Survivor-themed ones, and Blake and Phil play them and try to solve them. So if you want to go check those out, we're going to be – I don't know when we're dropping the next one, but we have a couple recorded – um, we just got to chop them up, but I've been looking at the logos because that's where I can view all the seasons at once. And I'm like, okay, let me get the seasons. Let me see what, what these connections are. Uh, co is probably my favorite logo. It's awesome. I'm surprised they included it all. It seems like they didn't include, like they didn't include Island of the Idols logo. Um, it seems like they didn't really, they only included logos. They maybe want to remember seasons. They want to remember. Well, they didn't have Australia or Africa, but they had Marquesas. So I don't know about that. And yeah, that is it, they, 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 they did have Thailand, <laughs> Thailand getting a shout out. Uh, they had Guatemala also. Yeah. So, um, and they had Fiji, I think the original Fiji. Um, it, it was fun though. I liked, I liked the game and I'm, I'm really confused that we're still talking about this and not everything that, that happened this episode. That was, you know, so important. Um, I, can I say this though before we move Wait, on? Wait, Gabon is on. Gabon's my favorite because has a big monkey. It has a. I wouldn't call that a monkey. That is that is slander in the apes universe. That's a gorilla. Is it? Mm -hmm. There's a there's a there's a gorilla, a snake, um, and then yeah, there the are big elephants. See, what what got me with this one was if you would say to me, Phil. You got to put the logos in order and the names aren't going to be there. I'd be like, oh, that's actually going to be pretty tough. Like I'd have to look at each one and oh, you know, really. Well, that starts to get tough in the later ones when it starts to be, if they're not going to write the words heroes, healers, hustlers, 
I don't know if I'd be able to differentiate that from the Game Changers logo. I kind of know the colors, oh, but I don't hundred percent would be able to. I would okay. have gotten this. I would have gotten this in probably ninety seconds. If I'm uh, well, honest. what I was going to say is, with the names on there, this is literally the easiest challenge in the history of Survivor. Like, and I understand that if you haven't watched every season, you don't know. But this is an easy way to figure out who are like diehard super fans and who are really big fans who just happen to watch a bunch of episodes. Um, diehards. It would have taken me the amount of time just to pick up each block. That's all it would have taken. It would have been, oh, I don't think Australia or Africa is here, so Marquesas is next, and then Thailand. And where's Amazon? Is it here? I don't know. Let's go to Pearl Islands. Like people Amazon were like, have the two can. Come on. It doesn't matter if you're starving or not. If you're a Survivor fan, I could have probably done the 17th place finishers. And I know not every season has 17th place, but I could have done the 17th place finishers on this damn thing. Like this is so easy. And I was shocked Hunter got it as wrong as he did. Only eight out of 20. That's Well, because once you get one wrong, it kind of shifts your whole thing off. So if you had average placement away from its – like most of his were off by one because he had Karamoan very early. He had that within the first 15 seasons. And once we saw that Karamoan was in there, we knew everything else was just going to be basically one off. And then at some point it corrected itself. And then at the end, he didn't even know that David versus Goliath was – after heroes healers hustlers and even if you didn't know the order of those if you've seen those two seasons introducing fire making you know forced fire making at final four that was introduced in 35 and then was a format change that was a part of 37 Dave versus goliath so even if you didn't know you could have kind of deducted that i don't know how much time he had um Doesn't but matter. yeah this this to me i don't blame hunter it seems like hunter he said, like, I started watching pretty recently with a roommate, and I, he didn't watch them in order. And if you aren't, like, a, a super fan like us, then you just don't know the order of the seasons unless you're doing trivia and stuff. But, hey, maybe Hunter wants to try out our Connections game. And you can cool. play along. There's a link under the Connections video where you can click and play. And if you don't know how Connections works, it's there are 16 names um of items or what you know the new york times just give me any word basically and on these they're either seasons or players and you have to find four groups of four that they all group they all share some things they share some trait so go have fun with that we had to plug our our new connection series but yeah. phil let's get into oh, oh, i want to say i want to say real quick because no you keep wanting the heart no, no, no. patreon.com slash the specialist we're going every season matters we're doing them in order we're dedicating a month two episodes a week to every single season of the show in order we've done borneo we've done australia we've done africa we're in the middle of marquesas right now if you're sitting there saying to yourself well i don't know if i would have gotten this if you're thinking you're ever going to get on survivor maybe they are going to start pulling out some of the survivor history you can go and you can become a patron it is our top tier patron level so it is you know it's a pretty penny but it's also with the power rankings game and a bunch of other games involved but we are on marquesas right now so if you need to tune up on your survivor knowledge if you become a patron today you get access to all of the episodes we've already put out at that tier so you could roll through that series um i think we've released one of marquesas and tomorrow will be the second one so i wanted to drop that like this video subscribe to our channel do all the stuff you're supposed to do we appreciate the interaction you're all doing awesome we enjoy it we appreciate it go do the connections game let's actually talk about what happened in this episode now will what do you want to start with i think we start with I think I'm down to start with Maria's extra vote and what happened here because it, to me this was a waste of an extra vote pretty much immediately once Ben revealed to Maria like hey you should probably like uh you know uh or like I actually probably don't have a vote like he he knew but he didn't tell this tribe he said maybe maybe not he pretty much tells Maria I don't have a vote tonight that totally should have clued Maria into being like oh there's only five votes. There's never going to be a 3-3 tie. We don't need this seventh vote because this vote had no influence. It had, there was no point to it. So uh, here's my biggest problem with it is, even if she was worried about a 3-3 tie, how is there going to be a 3-3 tie when you are voting with the men? You're voting with Tim and Charlie to get rid of gems. You're voting with Tim, Charlie, and Ben. You know that all three of the dudes are voting together. Charlie has now convinced you to vote out one of the Charlie's angels. So Tim and Ben are going to vote that way. So even if Ben is missing a vote, and maybe she was concerned. Here's my thinking. Yeah, I think I think that's Tim why we figured out. Both missing. There you go. We figured it out. No, she no, was I wasn't going to say that. Oh, I thought you would actually land it on it. I think whenever you see a move like this and you scratch your head and it's not available to us immediately on the surface, 
you have to think in terms of them on the island as a player. And I think this was a self-preservation. If she somehow thought that the men, I think she felt good about the women. She felt good about Jem and Mariah. We're definitely going to going to vote Ben out, and that that was what they were going to do. They did not include. They did not loop in Mariah on this vote, uh, which is important. So she could be thinking, perhaps the men are going to throw three votes at Maria. And then that way, if it's then three votes Maria, and then one vote on Ben. Oh, wait, no. No, it doesn't um, work. Here's, I can great. tell you, I, you're overthinking it. Here's what it was. Am I overthinking it? Tim and Ben both went on uh, journeys. She might have been concerned they were both missing votes. So to ensure that it's a 3-2 majority... Her and Charlie are voting together. Jem and Mariah uh, and Mariah are voting together. She cast that extra vote. If Ben and Tim so don't she's, have votes, she's she basically sure three two. She's thinking Tim might have lost his vote. His vote, but why wouldn't he have told her? It seems like, and that's a big part. I of I think this the biggest episode. thing is people didn't know where they stood yet because they haven't been to tribal, so you don't know who to trust yet. You can't trust anybody thoroughly yet. That's very true. But a big part of this episode was like, that, like, Tim and Maria have this, like, really strong bond out of nowhere. Because we had gotten, like, zero of that. And I think this is probably good storytelling. I mean, I don't think we could be angry that we didn't know that. We don't get to know everything. That's that's mm -hmm. not the goal of the storytellers. It's actually to make the best entertaining episode. So what we've been shown on this Sega tribe is that the... the the girls are really tight together, plus Charlie. That's your foursome. And then, you know, as we kind of went through the season, it was like, okay, Charlie and Maria, they're actually very open to going, you know, with the boys or with the girls. So that once we get to this vote, it's Jen that actually goes home. Like, if you see this, this from after the first episode, after the premiere, you'd be like, whoa, what happened? It was, it was the Charlie's Angels Alliance. It was that foursome. So this feels more like a blindside in a bigger vote out. Um, even though Maria and Tim have probably been pretty close this entire time and we just haven't seen it. We got Corwin here. He says, um, episode one, Tim and Maria bonded over being parents, but it was like a 20 second, nothing. And remember when yeah, that's they a 20 second when, thing and a two hour episode, when Q, it's not like we have seen continuing scenes. of this. Well, that's what he's saying is it really yeah. was nothing. They didn't play it up enough, but Q when Q Hunter and Tim came up with their plan, Tim said Maria would be his number one. Yeah, in out of nowhere. Alliance. Yes, and that we had only really seen this alliance take off tonight. It really, it really was, and that's that's why when I got to tribal, I was thinking, oh man, like what is Maria? Because it's not only Charlie that's in a pickle. Maria is in a pickle too. Because they really did have to decide. And I mean, honestly, did they make the right call? What do you think, Phil? Did, was yes. it smarter I do. to get and rid of Jem than it was to get rid of Ben? Here's my reasoning. And and I don't know about what was happening on the island, but as a watcher, Jem is so much more dangerous than Ben. Ben is a really good social player. They're talking about he's got the rock and roll charisma. They want to use him as a rock and roll shield. Jem just had her tribe digging under a tree for three days to try to find this advantage that she was holding in her pocket. She told nobody about it. And she was, dude, she was playing so hard. I'm a big gem fan. Even though we only got a couple episodes of her, I'm a big gem fan. I appreciate how hard she was playing. I really, really loved what we got. It was very villainous, but in a very fun way. But she had an idol. They didn't necessarily know she had the idol, but she was going to stir the pot post-merge. Maybe they could feel that in a way we didn't get let in on because Yanu kept going to tribal councils. But I feel like this was absolutely the right move for them. Yeah, it's hard to know. It's like we're sitting here knowing that she's been stirring the pot and she has this idol and she hasn't told anybody and she's having her tribe dig for three days. I don't know if everyone else on that tribe landed on that. Clearly, I think Tim had landed on, a, I think it's Jem, the one that did this. She seems the most likely. Um, and maybe that's a conversation between Tim and Maria and Tim convinced her that, Hey, Maria or convinced Maria that, Hey, Jem's playing really hard. I think she's the one with the idol. Um, but there's also a world where they didn't suspect Jem and we just saw her playing really hard and being weird and aggressive and paranoid going up to Tim and to Ben people outside of her Alliance that she wanted to gain information. My question is, so like I, I'm I'm on the fence on whether what whether it's the mm -hmm. right move because I think Jem Mariah uh, Maria and Charlie could have been a solid forward. I think just because Jem wasn't telling them things doesn't mean they completely made the right move. And hey, maybe Jem plays herself out of the game into the merge, and that's someone that goes out instead of you. 
But my question is, wasn't Jem the one pre-merge that says if you find an idol, play it the first time, you know they're just going to rehide yes. it anyway? Yes. That was her, right? Yes. So this was, she fa- finally found the idol. And it's funny, that was like her number one survivor hot that was take. was her pre-game I thing, yep. Was that a, yeah, our pre-game hot take. And I mean, look what just playing 11 days will do to you. Change your complete, your, your, your kind of your whole attitude around idols and advantages on what you should do completely changed in 11 days because you get out there and you have an idol and you're thinking wait a second do i really do i really need to play this i'm probably fine i don't i don't need this idol tonight i want it heading into the merge and you get greedy one night and look at jeb she just went home with an idol with an idol it's wild man uh it's wild now obviously ben staying i feel like is you know ben's becoming kind of a fan favorite uh, because he's just so different from like a lot of the guys they cast on the show. But what do you think we're missing now moving forward without having Jem here? Because I feel like her and Venus post merge, they were both getting like that under the radar v- villainous female edit that was going to backstab and betray, do whatever they needed to do to get to the end, which we've seen, but I feel like this was going to be that older school version of this. Are you were you getting that too, or do you feel like I'm just totally overhyping Jem right now? No, I think Jem was playing a really fun game, and she said as much last episode where she said, "I'm just doing this little idol thing for fun." Like she mm-hmm. she kind of had a strategy, and she kind of like you know what what what's it called? It's uh, retconning. She kind of retconned her her reasoning for why she did this whole beware advantage charade in the first place where today she's like, I wanted to get the heat off me and look now it's on to Tim. And I, I know we heard a little bit about that, but the main reason reason she provided to us was that, Hey, let's have fun out here. We're on survivor. I'm going to screw. I want to mess with these people and just have, have fun. Like what's wrong with that? So I do agree with you that Jem was a fun character. I think she would have been very fun in the merge, but if we are comparing Ben versus Jem in terms of like, who I wanted to see more. I, I think Ben probably wins out for me, but either way tonight, I was going to be disappointed knowing that one of those two were going home for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I totally, totally agree with you right there. Um, I mean, Nicholas says, Phil address how y'all thought Jim had the winner quote episode one. I mean, she did, she had a winner's quote. She doesn't win, but the, the old, at the end of the day, she had a winner's quote. Don't win. <laughs> so right. like everybody, yeah. we're going to have red herrings all the time. Yes, it's one of those things. If she does win, it's a winner quote. If she doesn't win, it's a red herring to trick us. And that's what it was. It was a red herring. It's like the connections game. You guys really got to check out the connections. Which game. you did. Will is really like pushing this, pushing this, push. Also, if you don't follow us on TikTok, go over there because we'll be putting them out in shorter form over there. So you can like really see the highlights um, too. So we haven't, we, you know, if you want to follow us on social media, we're trying to be fun. We're the fun old guys now. We're like Jeb. We're just, we're, just, let's just have just having a good time. Survivor, okay? We're hoping that when we appear, it's ruining your day, but we're having a good time. That's what's really important here. Um, okay. Why do you think Tim was able to pick pinpoint that this was Jim? Was this just the edit? Was he saying this to everybody or was this legit? Because this was really savvy if this is real. I think he just figured it out. I, I think, I don't think Jem is as good of a liar as she thinks she is. And again, she didn't really have a full on plan. <laughs> For this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she just like was like, let's just put it here, and then all six people find it at once, and then everyone has to dig. And then I think I said this last week, um, or maybe it was with Bruce, that if two people had stumbled across this, or one person stumbled across this, and they can't find it and they're freaking out, that's kind of funny and it messes with them, and there's not really much heat off you. The fact it was all six of them at once it really it, then you're looking at everybody and you spend a lot of time with i mean you're spending all your time with these people that after a day or two days or three days of talking about it of digging of undigging like filling the hole back in like you're going to give something up with your body language and your mannerisms it's just going to happen and i know it might not be uh carson's with his book of his fbi book about body language that he read maybe tim didn't read that but it doesn't take someone who's like out of this world intelligent or who even studies that thing to just be like you know what gem's giving me funky vibes and i think it's gem i don't think what it's that you... crazy of a of a read uh-huh. here yeah and then we also had um with the hammer and the machete very you... yeah this i mean that scene itself was hilarious but i guess what i'm saying is like you're you're talking about body language and things like that she's walking around with a machete coming up to you being like hey 
what do you, I'll, I'll vote for whoever you say, I'll vote for whoever you say. I mean, you start to get a weird vibe from a person who's walking up to you with a machete like that. Uh, I think it was Mike Bloom tweeted out the one of Amy holding out the machete to Eric Reichenbach, which is one of the funniest because that, that wide shot of it just getting like this far from him. Um, I feel like, you know, that made everybody uncomfortable. And, t- and Ben is able to then take that, say, I grabbed the hammer because she had the machete and make a joke out of it. And everybody is like, man, Jem is going too far. But I do think it speaks to the, I think it speaks volumes to how well Charlie and Maria are playing this game right now, that Jem had no idea that this was a possibility she'd go home tonight. Yes. And that's what's so interesting about the gem conversations with Ben and with Tim. It was so it, it came out. Uh, I almost felt like she was paranoid that like she was going to go home. And that's not what it was. It was like, do I need to play my idol? Which I guess is some level of paranoia, but she was fine. She could have played her idol and just, hey, Ben goes home. That's it. She's going on the merge. But she really was trying to like, it's almost like she cared so much about this idol that it ruined her game. I feel like if she doesn't ever find the be- beware advantage, that Jem does not rise to this level of being paranoid and threatening and scheming and like weird vibes. And she can just be herself. She's got along with Mariah, Marie and Charlie really well. She has a four and that four has an extra vote. So she has five. She's with the five out of the seven votes. That idol really, I think ruined her game. Like, I don't think she gets yeah. this weird. She and got gets this kind of, She like this, this whole this whole ploy of rehiding the beware advantage. Maybe if she doesn't even do that, like this doesn't come back to bite her because that was clearly not a good move. And now that we know Tim and Maria are super tight, like Tim was definitely telling Maria, "Yo, Jem has the idol." I am telling you because Tim was pretty damn confident about it. So really, that whole beware advantage it was a beware. I kept saying mm-hmm. this whole season. This is the worst beware advantage ever. And I actually still stick to that. I'm now looking at kind of a different angle on the bewareness of it all um now i remember we had adam on and adam was saying well i don't know you only have so much time once you get mm-hmm. back and everyone's scrambling she did this so easily this too. was a no different one, thing too no what did you could... think about the fact that this was different from what tip had i think we've been seeing this where there's like different goals i think we saw mm-hmm. that in season 45 where reba had like a code on their like tribe flag and then there was some other one and another. Tri- I, I was not surprised that it was not the exact same word scramble that we saw Tiff do or the cryptogram or the, mm-hmm. the substitution cipher, whatever, whatever we're calling it. But no, this was this was fun. I liked measuring out the machete lengths and doing math and then having to measure that out from a spot. And like you are, you know, you're going to highlighted places. You're going to the tri flag. You're going to tree mail. Maybe if they did it at the well, that would have made this a little bit more difficult because that's where people actually go to strategize. But there was this big path. Um, so I don't know. I just think to beware this beware advantage. I don't need to ever see this again. We're merging next week, lose this one. We didn't get to like what you want out of this advantage when they put this in the game is somebody throwing a challenge so that they can get an idol. We saw yeah. Hunter find his today, but then we found out as viewers, and the players have known this the whole time, but as viewers, we found out today, and correct me if you did if you already knew this, Phil. I did not know this. There is a clause that says if you never if you never lose Jen, a challenge that when she got hers. Oh, she did. Okay. And yeah. I mean, that probably makes sense. I think we got that with the phrase idols and 41 and 42 is like, okay. I remember uh, Dan had to check it and he lost the note and he lost the idol and he was checking Mike's thing. And it was like, no, if these, if you will get to the merge and none of them are said, you get your vote back and the idols activated. So uh, yeah, I think, I don't know. It said something like you have to do a task, but I'm sure he'll have to do something. Uh, it's not just going to become activated because he technically doesn't have the idol yet. He just knows yeah. where to dig. And he's going to have to get his vote back somehow, right? So, like, there's right. got to be something that he does. You can't just you be can't. like, oh, he doesn't get it. Yeah, you can't let Hunter not have a vote the rest of the game. Although, with how he treated Michelle Fitzgerald tonight, it's the least they could do. Yeah, just take his vote away. because I don't think he should Michelle. be allowed to participate in immunity challenges anymore either. I think he's done. I think, sorry, Hunter. You have to sit out now every challenge. He just movie. sits out uh, for rice. Every yeah, oh, you 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 didn't you didn't think it was worth mentioning Michelle's game? Uh, let's see how your social game is, buddy. You're not allowed to play any immunity challenges now. Good luck. Bye. Um, what did you think about, but let's be real here. What did you think about this journey alliance? Do you think this is going to be something that's actually going to pan out? This seemed like a good idea. Let me just say the six people. It was Q and Tiff. It was Hunter and Tevin. And it would be Tim and Maria. Now, obviously, we know Maria and Charlie are pretty tight. But is this something that could happen? No, of course not. 
I mean, I'm sure there will be attempts and maybe there will be some combination of people. But if it, it, is it going to be that exact six? No, it will not be that exact six for many reasons. One is that Tim, yeah, Tim is saying Maria is his number one. We know Maria is closer with Charlie than she is with Tim. At least that's what we're being shown. Mm -hmm. um, we also, I mean, if anything that this journey did, which I really liked from Q's part, Q knows that Banu has said uh, that Tiffany and him are very tight. Mm -hmm. So Banu spilled the beans. And then Q comes out and he owns that. It's like, yeah, Tiff's, Tiff's my number one. Like, who's your guy's number one? Very op open to talking about this and that, yeah, I've been to three tribal councils. I do have a number one at this point. It is Tiff. Let's talk about it. So, uh, and then here we go. Andy Vogel, six out of 13 is not a majority. That's that's true. It doesn't mean that the Alliance couldn't, you know, at some point get together. I mean, the math I mean, is there's no votes so anymore, Andy. So, yeah, they could be a majority because six out of 13, but there's not 13 votes. There's not 13 votes. And you could go, you know, go two rounds. Two people go home. That's six still in there. Then it's the funny part was like, let's go to final six. I, yeah. I'm not I'm not saying that these six people can't work together. I think the the Sega part of this, I do believe that Tevin and Hunter and Tiff and Q can make something. And then maybe Ken's they just why not loop Kenzie in at this point? Uh, and then let Sega kind of figure out their own issues. But um Hey, I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe that's your final I, six right now, Bill. I mean, we got this confessional from Q being like, does that sound like a good idea? It does sound like a good idea. And he just looks at the camera so confidently and you're almost being begged as an audience to just like roll your eyes and go, sure, man, I'm sure that's going to work out perfectly for you because plans this far laid in Survivor always work. They always come to fruition. Can I say what my number one hope is for this alliance? My number one hope for this alliance is that it actually gets mentioned again, because I feel like in I the new era, yes, I think, but I think in the new era, there have been a lot of widows. And honestly, this has pretty much been going on since the thirties, a lot of widows where something will be said, it'll seem really important. They'll focus on it. And then it goes away and is never mentioned again. And you're sitting there going, remember when they talked about this? I really hope that this alliance at least gets brought up in the future. And it's not just, Oh, because it was what happened at the journey. We have to include it. Even if, it doesn't amount to anything. I just hope that we at least hear these words spoken again, because otherwise it does feel like, is there no continuity on this? Did they never want to talk to each other? And that's just not the feeling I'm going to get from this group. So yeah. Anyway, I think we saw, we saw it at the journey that we also saw some, like, like I said, there was a confessional from Q right after it. So it's like, they did linger on this a little bit i would be surprised if it doesn't get brought up again especially now that we're dealing with 90 minute episodes i mean this kind of has remnants of the original secret alliance that nobody knows about across tribes from token teams yeah. um and that did not really amount to anything for a number of no. reasons one was that brandon didn't really was it brandon or brandon brandon, forget. brandon. brandon did not tell who he was supposed to tell um about the alliance and so that kind of <laughs> threw a wrench into things and then also there was a medical evacuation when yes. it was really going to take over, I believe. What is the name of the medical medical evacuation in that season, Will? Do you remember? I don't know. Joe Daddle's knee. There you go. You got Joe Daddle. Okay, good. No, I just wanted to make sure. I already said one... Joe Daddle. Oh, you did. Okay. You, you said yeah. there was a medical evacuation, so I wasn't sure if you remembered that because you are making the connection. So I got to make sure that you're like, you have some knowledge up there. You're not just looking everything up. Well, that's why there is a future one coming. And it said I had Joe D, uh, but I wasn't referring to Joe Dowdle, so I had to put Joe D C. Yeah, Del Campo, that was, exactly. Uh, Joe that Del one Campo. actually, I think it's two or three. Yeah, yeah, he, um, he he worked his way into a connections. Yeah, he did. What did you think? Now, so let's let's kind of wh where should where should we go here? Like, what what tribe do you want to go to? Do you want to you want to go over to Nami and talk about how this fizzled really bad? Hunter hit ten confessionals in this episode tonight, so Hunter we gets that. We did get a lot of Hunter. A lot. Me. It was big. Yeah. It was a big episode for him. Because he had been, we had is, talked about, he'd been quiet. He'd been really quiet. And this was kind of your boy. This is one of your early people you thought could win the game. I took him first overall in the fantasy draft just to make sure you weren't going to take him first. Um, and here I am sitting with Hunter. And he looks like he's in a very good spot. And I think he is likely going to be able to get this idol. Um, seems like he's got connections. I mean, ooh, connections. He... Wow. Oh, you yeah, love it. Whoa, whoa. He, I think working against him is that he is so clearly 
a massive, massive threat. I think what's amazing about him right now, though, is he is so aware. He can't name the he can't list the seasons in order where it's shit, but he is so aware of his strengths and weaknesses. He knows what he needs to be doing in order to help himself in the game. He knows mm-hmm. that he's going to be a massive physical threat once the merge hits. He knows that he is going to have issues even if he gets good alliances moving forward. He knows that Soda could get closer to Tevin and that could be a problem for him. He's really good. And Andy says it perfectly right here. Pros, Hunter is really good at Survivor. Cons, Hunter is really good at Survivor. I think he is really, really knowledgeable and really self-aware. But that can only take you so far. You still have to you still have to win some things. And like Joe Anglum, every time he played after his first season, knew he was going to be a target if he didn't win immunity. It didn't mean he could do anything about it. So, but I mean, getting the idol here for Hunter would be massive. And I think he is somebody who would play it the first time because he would feel in danger. Although we did see Jonathan Young go all the way to fire. So it can happen. Yes, but Jonathan Young clearly had other flaws where at some point I think people were like, I want to sit next to Jonathan at the end of the game. And I don't know if we're going to get that same type of energy surrounding Hunter where he becomes basically a goat. Um, but yeah, big, big episode from Hunter. Um, like I said, this these idols seem to be very easy to find. I know there are a lot of steps, but they're not too complicated or too difficult. Do you want to jump over to Yanu getting its first win? And I thought actually this was really well done in a lot of fun, the way they like really leaned into it and hammed it up because part of you is like, oh my gosh, are they are they actually going to lose again? Are yeah. they are they gonna lose? Dude, it seemed they like it for a second. Challenge like Jeff is men- just mentioning the the Rusted records them. with the flint, with the challenges in a row of the new era and and they start the challenge and instantly they're in third place. And you see the Nami tribe pretty much, I think they finished the slingshot portion before Yanu even gets there. And I even verbally said, I'm like, oh my God, this season sucks. I said the exact same like, thing. Oh my God, Yanu is going to lose <laughs> again. And then it's this back and forth. Yanu gets one, Siga gets one, Yanu gets one, Siga gets one. And it's, it's such an intense challenge and the stakes have been raised. It's so high because we get that early scene with John Yanu and just in how much pain and suffering and that they've gone through hell. They still like when Tiff is like, we haven't even slept by a fire yet. Like yeah. I'm freezing. You cut you. Oh, you have not. Yeah, had you got to learn how to make a fire with, with, with more than just Flint for anybody who's going to play in the future. You got to do yeah, that. You got to be I'm telling you, bring a magnifying glass as your luck through it. I doubt yeah. they'll let you do that, but, um, yeah, I mean, they really set this up where either way, it was like, if they do win, great job by the show and raising the stakes and make, making it feel so important and triumphant for them. Or if they lose, it's like, yeah, we set it up and they still lost and that's why we set it up. So, yes, okay, uh, Corin Green, I was about to get to this. He says, I honestly have expected that someone shot was going to be a miss and I would have laughed hysterically. I was thinking the same thing because – Oh, they, right. they actually combine multiple angles of this slow-mo shot and they're like zooming in on cue and the music's going up and you're like, are they going to make it this obvious? Like he might, he might miss this one. And they show up from one angle and it actually looks like it's going high. It's, this is like a profile view essentially of, of the sandbag approaching the target. Yeah. And then they pull out right when they're, they're facing it. I don't even know uh portrait mode i don't even know what to say basically you're facing portrait the target <laughs> the target and and it, it hits it hits it dead center and knocks it over but like for a split second it looks like and maybe they uh maybe they use like an insert or a pickup shot to to show it going sailing too high just to tease us for that half a second because that was a half second tease that was very mm-hmm. much worth it so great editing all around on that challenge really really exciting you really felt the uh you really felt the stakes you did. And I, I loved it, man. And their celebration and, and it, it felt epic, like because it needed to feel epic. These three, even if none of them go on to win, which I don't necessarily think any of them will. This was a massive moment. We had not seen a tribe lose the first four immunity challenges in the new era. So this was brand spanking new for us in the new era, at least. And I know Randon goes home there, but this could have easily been a two person tribe battling this out right here. So they got a little lucky. Now they have three. And I just like really loved everything about this. This was super exciting. So look, 
good for Q, good for Kenzie, good for Tiff. Now you get to make the mergatory. Now it's a whole new game. I'm I'm pumped for how this is going to go. This was an excellent episode of Survivor. It was very, very fun. It was so much fun, and I'll talk about the fun. There was plenty for us to discuss. There were a lot of hints at stuff that could happen. We got a blind side on somebody who had an idol in their pocket. This was an excellent episode of Survivor. Big, epic, upwards puzzle kind of, like whatever, you know, upwards challenge, which we don't always get nowadays. Love those. So, like, this was a very, very well-made episode. I'm yeah. excited for what's coming next. Uh, in agreement. And there are other things we haven't even mentioned yet. Like, what did you think of Q's strategy of telling Kenzie that, you know what? It just is what it is. I think I'm done. I'm packing it in. Like, did Kenzie even buy this? Because we didn't really hear from Kenzie her thoughts on this. I don't know if Kenzie bought it, but I respect what Q is doing. Like, I respect that Q, Q is doing something simple, like when he's teaching, he's going to teach uh, Banu how to play. Q is thinking about how everybody else's relationship is with everybody else. And that is so important when you play Survivor. He's not just thinking about what's my relationship with Kenzie. He's thinking about what's Tiff's relationship with Kenzie. Because now if I say this to Kenzie, Kenzie's going to go back and talk to Tiff, and Tiff's going to be like, yeah, I guess maybe he does want to quit. I don't know. And now that is making Kenzie more comfortable in the game. If he says, no, like, we'll be fine. I'm feeling it. I'm going to be good. Kenzie goes back and says to Tiff, man, he's going to be threatening when we get to the merge. And now the conversation is a little bit different of maybe we should get rid of Q. I think this is really good gameplay. Could have bit him in the ass, but I think it's really good. Yeah, and I we actually saw one of the times, one of the many, many times that Kenzie came up to Q and Tiff. I love that little montage. It's, it was really fun. You rarely see scenes like that. What are you guys talking about? And yeah. one of the one of the so times good. Tiff answers with, oh, about how Q wants me to write his name down. So mm -hmm. like even Tiff, like subtly we're seeing that Tiff is playing along because I don't think we heard explicitly from her in a confessional that she's completely aware of what's going on. I mean, I know Q and them, Q and Tiff are clearly tight, but that was just a really nice nod that Tiff's like clearly also playing Kenzie here too. Yeah, she is. And I think that, I think Tiff is playing both sides really, really well. Oh, she's she had to. Middle, she's doing it. But I ultimately and if, like, think if one of them of goes on a journey, good. if one of them goes on a journey, you need to just go with the one that got the, yeah. got the toy, that got the advantage. Yeah. If or who doesn't happens, have their vote. You, you need to vote yeah, that person out. You can't just be like, I'm with Q and I'm going to cut ties with Ken Kenzie and sorry, Kenzie, because you don't know what you could get. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I totally, totally agree with you. Um, Can I throw this one up and do a quick, quick thing for Adam? Bar 6578, we need Phil to play. Did Adam give you an application consult? He did not. But if you want an application consult from Adam, we have a link in the bio here in the description of our video. Make sure you go. Tell him that the specialist sent you if you are interested in doing that. We all know that if you're listening to this podcast, you could have named the seasons better than Hunter did. So if you want to get out there and you think that Survivor is starting to go the more fun way and you're a little concerned about how your video is going, check out Adam Kleins. He's, he's, he's great. I love talking to Adam. Adam knows so much about the show, and he wants to help you make the best video you can possibly make. So there you go. The link or if you want to do future. something else. I mean, he said he got somebody on Deal or No Deal Island, which is like only in its first season. They only had like 12 cast members. So that and one, one of them <laughs> and one was already Boston Rob who didn't yeah. even need to, you know, go through the casting stuff. I mean, in some way I'm sure he did. But like, so there's only like 11 to 12 new people on that season, I, I believe. And one of them came from Adam. So clearly he knows what he's talking about. And it's not going to hurt you just to talk to Adam because he'll help you see other things and might be able to help you just in like real life ways. You, it might, you might be making a video, but learn things about yourself that help you with jobs and who knows what else. So yeah, yeah can't recommend Adam enough, but make sure if you do click that, that you say, hey, by the way, the specialist sent me. That's important. Let him know. Um, and yeah. Nicholas says, remind us people in the chat to like the video. Please like the video. Do all of that. I got my idle place thing ready to go. I'm actually going to start showing some stuff off, but we can wait on that for a little bit here. This is the loudest object of all time. My dog was losing its mind. But oh, that dog that is the worst. Yeah, I that had nightmares about that dog. That dog has bit me on several occasions. It hates people. 
Um, You're going to get my dog so- thrown into a pound, dude. You're just a little baby. You just can't. You can't. Will is such an alpha that he can't turn it off when he's around a dog that's been abused, you know? So like that dog wants to just bite and needs to get trust first. And Will's just such an alpha. He's like, no, I own this room. This is my room, damn it. And uh, the dog doesn't like No, that. I literally like walk into a room and it just runs up and bites <laughs> your leg. It's like, there's not really any thought going on from me over the dog. It just, it is what it is. Yeah, so, so anybody, if you're ever traveling through Florida and you want to stay at my house, now you know. Uh <laughs> Oh my god! I visited Phil, and I I am on the West Coast, obviously. So I took a red eye uh, out to Florida because that's like the most efficient way to do it, and I get to see Phil the most. Um, and so I landed at like five thirty or six a.m. and I get to Phil around seven or seven thirty, and all I want to do is just I just want to go to sleep, you know, I don't know, sleep for three or four hours, kind of catch up, and then I can wake up and work because I'm working on West Coast hours. And man, those three to four hours that I napped or slept, like those dreams were just all <laughs> dreams about June, just like biting me and attacking me. And I get sleep paralysis too. So I had a bunch where June was like on the bed with me, like <laughs> prowling over. Um, and especially you get sleep paralysis when you're sleep on, Oh, and, and June's adorable. We all love it. I love June. Is. June is a sweetie pie when she's got her muzzle on. <laughs> Actually, she's still trying to bite me through the muzzle. But um, anyway, we should we should bring this back to Survivor. go back to Survivor. Anyway, Will survived that. That's what we. That's I the did tie in there. Um, I did. Anyway, so let's let's go back to talking about Survivor and kind of things like that. Will <laughs> better to bite than the hump. Catherine I Bennett don't think so. Kind of okay. Yeah, he wants. She wants to know what kind of dog. I just showed it. So if anybody is watching the video, you can see the dog. The I murderous have. one. Kind of dog. Um. Where were we? What were we talking about? We were talking about getting people on the show. Here is Idol Plays. Will it go round? This is part of our package. So our package is the tree puzzle, this, and the Fitz Tower. If you want to put a time up, I'm going to finally put a time on the internet. I'll, like, speed through the video. I'll get somebody to speed it up for me, but I'll have a real clock there. So I'm going to put that up. Maybe we can go head to head and you can try to beat my time. I'm going to try to do it on my first attempt, though. I don't want you all to, like, I'm not going to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. I actually haven't. I did it for like one second. It was so loud and then it fell off and I thought it dented my tile. So it's a good product, man. It is sturdy. That is one thing I will say. So that link is also below if you're interested in buying any of these puzzles or anything like that. Because you just really want to be the next hunter. You want to be the next hunter who knows survivor information. Uh, He doesn't know survivor information. No, You want to be the one who does know it. The links are in the description to help you be that. Um, What do we got moving forward? We got the mergatory coming up. Are we? I think Yanu's sticking together. I think Mariah is going to feel very outcast. Nami hasn't had to go to tribal, but Venus is ready to burn the place down. What's going on, dude? What's yeah, I mean, on? we ha- we have some outcasts on these tribes now. Mariah is the only one who voted incorrectly um, and clearly wasn't in the know. And she felt really good about her tribe, I think. Like, she really probably felt like she had this four-person alliance for probably a week or over a week. So that's a long time to feel like, hey, I'm really good with somebody. I'm good with my four and then to have that be incorrect your first time going to travel, like, wow, those eight days that we were all a foursome together, you guys were all lying to me. Like, Mariah's not going to feel great. We already know that Venus doesn't give a flying something no. about the rest of her tribe members whatsoever. So those two, I think, could get, get together, Mariah and Venus. And then you got the Yanu three who got their own deal. And then we got this kind of weird journey alliance where I don't know where that's really going to end up. But I do think... That if Venus and Mariah can find home somewhere, I mean, they potentially might even be the swing boats. Uh, I'm sure Sega is going to do everything in its power to try to reel, uh, reel Mariah back in. Just be like, look, Jeb had the idol, and uh, we fit, we found it in her bag, or we, we whatever. Who they knows? Don't know they that. No, I'm saying maybe they'll come up with some some lie. I almost thought Tim was going to say that when talking to Jem, like, hey, Jem, I know you have it. I went through your bag, and she'd be like, oh, you got me. You know, like you got to kind of play like that. Uh, and I thought Tim might maybe was going to go that far. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Mariah and Venus are the free agents to watch out for. And then do you think any of that information that Banu spilled is going to have any influence? Like, I really don't. I think once you get out there, you start meeting the people like, oh, Banu went on a journey and said Kenzie, Kenzie's a mastermind. Well, yeah, you guys are all masterminds, too. You just voted out Jem, who has an idol. Like, great. Like, way to go. Um, are you really going to hold that against Kenzie? Oh, Q and Tiff are tight. Well, Q just owned up to that at his journey. 
So mm-hmm. I don't know if that's really going to come back and have any influence. Could be I don't think it's that. really going to have an influence also because when Banu told everybody that he was on the bottom and he was going to be the one who went home at that journey and then they all went back and said, Banu's going to be the one who goes home and then Banu goes home. It's kind of like, okay, this guy tells the truth, but also like he probably didn't have his finger on the pulse of what was actually going on, right? Like that, that kind of feels like where they're probably thinking. Nobody seemed shocked to see Banu out of the game. So you say to yourself, oh, well, he told the truth about himself being on the bottom. But then you're also saying to yourself, but what el- What other information? Banu he was crazy matter? at challenges, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, on the mat. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Um, There was just something here. In terms of, we have Corwin say Mariah, Venus, and Liz squad. Liz wasn't looking for idols today. She said she didn't really feel like it. She wasn't going to find it anyway. Liz feels comfortable, man. Does she become the front runner to make it to final tribal right now? Like, I'm not saying win because I don't think she can win. But is she now a front runner to make final tribal because she is just so Liz? <laughs> well, especially if she's like, eh, I don't want to look for idols. Like, that's a person you don't really need to worry about ruining your game. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely. It seems like Tevin Hunter and Liz are the three, though. We didn't hear anything really from Soda. We heard like one thing from Soda tonight, I believe. It was about the idol. It was at the this, beginning when they were doing the yeah, idol the hunt. Idol they hunt man. Oh, the idol hunts. I wish at this point they would just show us the person finding the idol. And I think the producers do a really, really, really good job of trying to show us a new way of editing someone finding an idol. But it's the same thing every time. And, and seriously, I'm giving them credit. Yeah. That even even today or tonight, it was it was you know, Hunter is looking for it and Soda is looking for it, and I don't know. I and think they managed even to make it feel something. unique, even though it has been. Yeah, and then we get this. The fun part of it was the Venus Hunter conversation, and then Hunter, uh, you know, finds it, and they all. It almost felt like Venus was going to find it the way they set it up. They go confessional, mm. confessional, confessional. Three people talking about finding the idol. And then you jump into the scene with a Venus looking that she hasn't had the confessional yet because they have used that trick before, too, because there's been so many darn idols. Um, but I think at this point, we don't need to be tricked or bamboozled. Just get right into the scene with uh, with with Hunter and Venus and then Hunter finding the idol. I think that's OK. I don't think they need to bend over backwards to give us some new and unique editing trick for idol hunting because uh, we really have seen it all. Yeah, I agree with you. And I I thought this scene was fine. It also was a way to get all of Nami onto our screens without having to spend a lot of time. Every Nami player got one confessional tonight with the exception of Hunter who got 10. So it was a way to at least jump around to a tribe that we never saw go to tribal council in the pre-merge. So they at least like, they at least stay fresh in our brains as we move forward through the game. Um, I think that's I think that was well done. And if this was the way they wanted to do it, this way they wanted to do it. Something to keep an eye on, again, from a confessional standpoint. Venus, Tevin, and Soda all had an episode where they didn't get a confessional. Hunter and Liz had a confessional every episode of the pre-merge, despite never going to tribal council, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah, you love your confessionals. Big deal. Huge it deal. It is. It is. It's a big deal. Um. Anyway. I, I want to just can I can I shout out something for myself real quick, Will? Um, sure, shout it out. Survivor fantasy teams. We, you, me, and Blake drafted, and my whole team has made it to the mergatory. All six of them. Blake's down to three. I mean, Blake is just he's a yeah. Disaster. I will say I should have six out of six, right? No, five out no, of six. Out I of should six. I should have five out of six. I've ran it on my team, and he got pulled in like the late one of the latest. How did Jelinski do? Medivacs. All right. Jelinski had proved that he really should not have been the first boot. He should not have Yanu. So honestly, I might have had the best team because Jelinski getting booted co- led to the worst tribe ever because they kicked him out of it. Mm-hmm. And then Randon was pulled for something that ended up not being super serious. So, so yeah, you definitely have the best team. You definitely yes. have the best team ever when you have four left and I have six left. 100%. Yeah. I yeah. think so, yeah. No yeah. questions asked. Um, no. I just I just wanted to say that. My Blake, man, he's showing that he's he's new. He's new. He's new. He's new to this. Yeah, that's he's, fine. I have, uh, I have Hunter on my team, so I got the 10 confessionals tonight. Uh, yeah, clearly gotten a lot of challenge wins, participated in the reward. He found an idol or an advantage. He went on the journey. Um, he did fail the journey, but 
you get yeah he did for fail going that journey, on the journey. I don't know if you do um, yeah I don't have the updates yet for what happened tonight we don't have that we'll have that tomorrow morning so I don't have the scores because Andy was like tell us how we're all doing and it's like oh, I'll wait till tomorrow I don't want to tell everybody what your scores are but it's not actually lumping in tonight's scores, so that would be a little unfair did we miss any big points I know we we got sidetracked numerous times here Will went on a rant about my dog I mean did we miss any big things that we should have talked about I think we covered most of it, you know, Jem or Ben, who is the better choice. I think, I think it was probably, yeah, probably wa more wise to get rid of Jem and Charlie's arguments were fair that, you know, Ben, yeah, he's social, but he's a threat. He's also an asset. Like he can bring numbers to us and people are going to be looking at him before they look at us. So I, I'm in agreement. I think getting rid of, rid of uh, Jem and keeping Ben was the wise move. Uh, we parsed out the whole strategy around Maria's using her extra vote when she didn't need to. You think any part of that too was, you know, if you're Maria out there, it seems like everyone know everyone on your tribe knows you have an extra vote. And with the way the Jelinski Tevin game went down the premiere, you have to imagine that Tevin knows that you have an extra vote. Mm -hmm. um and that may hey you've only been in tribal once so hey have you even used it uh and if you don't use it he will know and he will tell the entire orange tribe and then it will get to the per you know we'll get to yanu and that basically everyone will know once you merge that you have an extra vote and so maria's like this thing isn't doing all that much to help me especially i think it was very powerful on a six person tribe three and three hey you yeah the extra vote now you got four to three you've got the numbers even if you only have two allies once you merge at 13, and then we know we're breaking, like half the people are going to be immune, half the people aren't, we have 13 people voting, and then at some point we'll break up into groups. Who knows who's even on my group? Maybe that is actually a good time where you would want it. I think that's when we saw Noel use it, but that was even just a way to trick James into not playing his knowledge of power or something weird like mm -hmm. that. But I think if you're Maria, it's like, just get rid of this thing. We're going to be on a 13-person tribe. What do I need one extra vote for? Everyone's going to know about it. It's going to make me a target. So that, that when she merges, she can tell Tevin, hey, I don't have my extra vote. Do you have yours? Oh, Tevin. Oh, Tevin's got the extra vote. Whoa, mm -hmm. whoa. We got to look at Tevin. He's the big threat. Yeah. So maybe there is a little bit of that in addition to being like, well, if Tim somehow lost his vote, in addition to Ben losing his vote, then we will need both of these. So yeah, and, it. and I mean, Andy had, to, Andy had said stuff. earlier that even if it was a tie 2-2 because Tim and Ben had lost their votes on a revote, Jem wouldn't have been able to vote, so it would have been 2-1 anyway. But I feel like you just want to make that clean and be like, yeah, I was the one. And now – Yeah, and even, even when you yeah. think through it that far and you're like, yeah, I really don't need to play this. Maybe I'm leaning more towards just everyone's going to know I have it. It's going to be way better if I am clean going into the merge. Just, mm -hmm. just got I think my one vote. So yeah, I think we we covered that. We covered the challenge, you know, Yanu and everything over there. We the journey. We clearly covered the journey. Probably covered the journey more than anyone thought we would talk about the journey. Yeah. Um, so many players have been mentioned. Let's. We didn't let's, cover the salsa dancing. I guess if I'm like, wow, we had a 90 minute fun. episode. It does that. feel like we have broken this down fairly quickly here. We're 53 minutes in with probably, you know, three minutes about June. Uh, Phil mm -hmm. Stahl. and like 10 minutes about Michelle Fitzgerald. So, we've yeah. yeah, so wait, are we missing something? You are right, it doesn't feel like maybe we maybe it's because no, I feel like we maybe, really, I think we really maybe, like this yeah. episode, and it's like we don't need to complain. Um, and when you do complain, you need to like explain why you're complaining, and yeah, that takes longer a lot of times. I've said I this hate before, smiling, Phil. It's so annoying when we like something, you say I like it, and you can say the reasons why you like it, but those reasons are way more simple than. The reasons why you don't like something and that requires more articulation of thoughts and ideas so, and all that yeah so let's just let's just give some updates on our fantasy games and stuff like that and uh we'll say our guest on sunday it will be easter sunday we're gonna have sabaya from last season Woo! Uh, 5 p.m eastern 2 p.m pacific time that is when Sabaya will be on so that's gonna be really really fun really excited to have her on for this mergatory episode that will be good. Also, tomorrow, uh, Blake and I are going to be doing Digging Deeper for the third time this season. That's going to start to become a weekly thing. And we're going to be joined by Troy Zan. It's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and we're going to have Troy Zan on. And we're going to be talking about when to play your idol. Uh, if you haven't been following along with that, it's more than just recaps. It is We're trying to focus in on one specific topic. The first time we did it, 
we talked about um, do Survivor fans actually want villains? The second time we did it, which was last week, we talked about um, what do we talk? Lost votes equals lost drama. So that was actually a really fun topic. This week we are going to be talking about uh, when to play your idol. So here's your updates on some prop bets. Gem is gone, so these are all the props that she hit. She got an individual immunity or a hidden immunity idol. I don't think she ever cried. If somebody wants to correct me on that, I don't think it ever happened. She got five or fewer votes. She got a confessional in every episode she was in, and she went home with an unused advantage. She never lost the vote. She never did any of that stuff, so that's there. Uh, ben officially lost his vote as of tonight, so his is gone. Banu and Jelinski have also joined him. The random one is hit or miss. Um, I Wait, don't... I think Hunter has now officially lost his vote, too. In, in, not because of the beware idol, but because he failed to uh, mention that is true. So name. Hunter has officially lost his vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did we, what, where did we land on with Randon? Randon never lost his vote or he did. He never lost his vote. He never went to tribal and it said, you do not vote because that's, or else you could say Jem lost her vote because she is, was in the same position as Randon. Yeah. Okay. 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 Podcast Sundays, 5 PM Eastern time uh, for anybody who I, I saw Nicola just put that in there. Um, okay. So we also had, I think Ben's already cried numerous times. So the journeys today, Hunter hit that. Um, obviously, Q hit that, and Tim hit that. Oh, Tim, Tim the episode title with Tiki. Tim man. had the episode title, Tiki Man. What, what am weird... I going to poop? <laughs> what am I going to poop, Tiki Man? That's amazing. Is this is this a foreshadow that he's going to get meta back for the same thing that Bruce uh, oh. and Giotto Campo had? Or the Aqua? I mean, Aqua Dump. Um... This guy can't know. poop, so is he going to get pulled out of the game? Look, I had this problem once. It's not fun. I had to get a massive surgery. Um, to, oh, my to God. The amount player. of players, the amount of former players that were mentioned tonight. Oh, that is, is so, so far over. It doesn't even matter. It's already now. over. It doesn't matter, but it yeah. is funny. We set that line, and, I mean, it's even if they did just this journey challenge alone, I think um, we get we get that many players we go over. Yeah. So everything else, we haven't had any of the other ones hit on overs yet um, with reward challenges. There was no tribe swap, so that's going to be an under. Um, so, so yeah, all of that there. We haven't had any shot in the darks played yet. Prop bets going back to that very quickly. We also had the third sit out for Mariah. So Mariah is the first one to hit three. Jem went out of the game with two. Liz is at two. Soda is at two. Charlie is at one. Ben is at two. Um, so Mariah was the first one to hit three. So you get the points for that. If you had her sitting out three times or more. And as I said earlier, Hunter got 10 confessionals this episode. He was the only one. So that is up there too. Um, that's all I did. No black shirts tonight from Jeff. So my count, I believe is at three. Okay. Season. So we still need a couple more of those. And that's really all I had. We didn't have, we didn't get anything else in this episode. Next week, we'll start to get, we won't get immunities yet, individual, but that'll happen the week after because next week will just be mm -hmm. the mergentory. So, um, yeah, that's it. I think that's it. I think we've covered it all. As we said, Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern with Sabaya. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, Blake and I are talking to Troyzan. That's always a good time. So get ready for that one. Will and I have been putting out podcast after podcast tomorrow night. Uh, McKenna and Celestina are going to be doing the amazing race because I got to work a baseball game. So I can't do the amazing race tomorrow. So the two of them are going to be doing an episode three recap. The amazing race has been super entertaining this year. I know if you're all listening to this, you're not watching the amazing race unless you're doing both, but catch up on the amazing race. Check that out. Deal or no deal Island has been great. Love deal or no deal Island. And, um, that's it, right? I think that's it. I think that covers everything. Become a patron, patreon.com slash specialist. We've been killing check it. Out the, check out the connections, uh, video. Oh, I forgot YouTube. connections even existed. Will I didn't know you liked that. Yeah, I think we covered that plenty. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So become go go watch the connections video. Watch me and Blake do a very good job in this first one. I'm not gonna say how we do in the next couple, but in the first one, we did a very good job. Bye, everybody. See ya.